If you're a real estate agent and you're tired of cold calling, door knocking, and spending money on ads, then subscribe to this podcast. We discuss leveraging the power of YouTube for your real estate business and how these strategies earned us over $1 million in GCI our first year in real estate. My name is Lee Bilasic and my partner is Travis Plum. Let's get started. We'll get started. So this is Passive Prospecting YouTube for Real Estate. And today we are discussing how to increase your content volume quickly. And Chris, you want to give me a little context? I guess this is a question that comes up quite a bit. So just want to uh, see if you don't mind kicking me off, giving me something here to work with as far as what uh, we can provide some clarity on today whenever it comes to increasing content. Well, I think that the misconception is, is that you have to do more content to be on more platforms. But one thing that we really emphasize with our business is that we're always trying to repurpose content. And it's really easy to get onto other platforms using the content that you already have by cutting it up into bits, creating shorts out of it, and just having an overall attitude of how can I reuse this in the future? And I think that that's really what we kind of, that question is kind of based around is how can you, rather than try to recreate content uh, in a bunch of different places or you know have to come up with a bunch of really unique content ideas and I apologize you're gonna hear my dog in the back um, but another you know talking about you know what can you do multiple videos on one day can you do multiple videos around a certain topic that type of thing okay well, let's um, let's let's uh, okay let me talk about increasing content first of all and if you're going to be watching the video portion of this podcast. I'm holding up my Waterman pen from Paris that my dad got me. Uh, funny thing was is that my dad is a artist. He's a he's an unknown starving artist right now. <laughs> so um, hasn't monetized anything, has always made some amazing art. Now, now that he's retired from his job, I believe he's going, actually he just had a a kickoff call with Chrissy this morning on uh, you know getting started. He's gone through <laughs> the YouTube course. He's read the book. He's listening to the audio book now. Uh, my parents are my number one fans. I do believe, and and so it's funny. He gave me this pen, this Waterman Paris pen. It's a very expensive pen, and but it holds those cartridges. Like if you want to get cartridges. For the G2, like the G2 gels, because I like those, um, what are these, pilots? Oh, yeah, pilot pins, G2s, that, that type of stuff. I've always just kind of liked those pins. Well, my dad loves uh, ink pens because he does a lot of artwork with ink. And in and, and one sitting, like he will, it's amazing because he could draw an entire picture and never mess up, uh, you know, and that's, that's pretty hard to do with an ink pen. Sometimes he even draws in like one continuous line, like not even picking up a pen and he'll, he'll just make some crazy, crazy stuff. And the funny thing is, is he went through the course, he went through the YouTube course and he was like, Levi. He goes, I want to tell you, and every time we get together, he always, he always like, he wants to explain one of my videos, uh, a chapter in the book, uh, something I said on the podcast. He always wants to break it down. So he's very analytical. He's always like, Levi, so I was listening to episode this or watching video number this, but this time he's like, Levi, I went through your entire podcast or no, the course. He's like, I went through your course. And he goes, the information was amazing. It's so detailed. And I learned so much and just started going on and on and on. But his whole point was, he goes, there's just one thing I could not get over was the fact that you were holding this. He goes, you, you've got this nice Apple computer. You've got your Apple iPhone sitting there. He goes, you're wearing this nice watch. He goes, you've got your sketch pad for your notes everything you know he goes you have top-notch equipment the camera quality is so good your microphone and audio is really good and he goes and then you're sitting there with a plastic pilot pen the whole time he goes drove me nuts <laughs> during the whole thing so so he got me this uh, uh if you're watching this on the video podcast later down the road you'll see it's a waterman a waterman pen made in paris and he had to, he found the original this is an original casing that took him quite some time to find because he he wasn't going to give me his not yet <laughs> so while he's alive so anyways so now i have this very nice uh, pen that i can write notes with so 
I was just saying that to say, okay, increase uh, increase your volume. Let's say breaking things down. Now, this is something we're going to start experimenting with a lot more here in the next week or two or three. And there's a lot of AI tools coming out, of course. And now there's there's AI tools that can automatically start breaking down your long form content. Uh, even in uh, TubeBuddy, I believe. Chrissy, have you uh, messed around with that any in TubeBuddy yet? So which feature? Sorry, you cut out for me for a second. The AI uh, to to generate short form content. You know, I have used it a little a little bit, and it's okay. It doesn't generate very many short, so I think they've got a ways to go on it. But it is a good option if you're just wanting to grab one or two pieces of content. Okay, and then I sent you another program the yeah, other day. Yeah, check that out too. What's that one called? Do you remember? I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, I'm definitely going to check that one out and see if it's any good. Can you look up that one I just sent you and um, yeah. see what that is? So sure. we'll let you know this other tool, but the, you probably just want to start looking for this. I mean, here's one option. You film, this is what I've always said, uh, I, I love long form content because that does allow you to break things down into short form content. It's a big reason too why I went from videos, uh, you know, videos where I'm kind of like bottom of chest and arms up. Uh, so used to like if you, you know, go through some of the earlier times in our discussions or even in the program uh, and even in the book, I mentioned this in the book, but then I also give the caveat. And I mentioned this last week too, is that I always want you to just be careful of, of things or people that, that speak in absolutes, just because I just believe everybody's journey is different. And everything I talk about is clearly how we've experienced success, but we try our best to pass that on to you. Uh, but at the same time, that doesn't mean the you know your journey is going to follow our journey exactly. However, we have to help several people and we get a lot of success stories of of people doing well and and uh, you know doing better sometimes uh, how we started out now again you got to remember we've got a, a, a two year you know two year plus head start and anybody starting today you know we're just we're, we're in the groove we're in the flow so finding that min that that uh, momentum you know just kind of and finding your groove takes a little bit of time and every market is different every person is different. Uh, every, every channel is different. And so y you just got to find your momentum and your groove. And there will be channels that will pass us up. You know, I do I do believe that as well. Somebody's going to do a lot better than us. Uh, and, you know, I don't know, Rochelle and Jonathan and Kyler, they, they, could be, they could be three of those channels that do that. They've gotten off to much better starts than we did. Well, Rochelle and Kyler, for sure. Uh, Jonathan's really kind of picking up his steam right now. But the thing is, is that... Uh, you know everybody's journey is different. So, um, what what I mention in the book is I like to be framed up. You know, uh, kind of like face in the video. Uh, you know, kind of like top of chest and top of head. But that makes it a lot more difficult to repurpose your content into short form content. You know, because you want to be able to crop and edit. And if you're filming anything horizontal, can be edited into vertical format. So if you watch this on the video later right now, I'm making hand gestures of that are basically just go right outside of my shoulders. So think about that. If you're picturing right now somebody sitting at their desk and you can kind of see from their elbows up to their top of their head, then there's going to be space on both sides of their shoulders, uh, plenty of space that can be cropped out to create a vertical con uh, piece of content right in the middle uh, there. So if you do that versus just your head, then it's going to make it a lot easier to crop that out and you'll be able to chop up short form or long form content into a lot more short form content. A lot of the uh, my recent pros and cons videos are done this way and it's been a lot easier for the team to be able to chop out short form clips for that, you know, on that side of it to feed Instagram and TikTok and these short form platforms. It's just so much better and it looks a lot better as well. Uh, whenever it's edited to a short form piece of content. So that's something you want to keep in mind. First of all is how you're framing and positioning yourself. So again, we, 
We, you know, believed in the beginning, kind of like top of chest to top of head, keeping your head, you know, pretty sizable in that office video to create eye contact and just give people a little bit more of a connection. But at the same time, I think that can work, but it just makes it a lot more difficult for the editing. So therefore, back up a little bit if you can kind of go more for the elbows up. But I also notice this in, you know, a lot of... Uh, creators that I observe or, or look at, then uh, they, they a lot of their videos are from kind of like elbows or, or waist up. So that's just something that uh, made me start thinking about that. But also whenever we started repurposing content, it just was difficult whenever it's, if it's just your face, <laughs> if you try to punch in or punch out, whenever I, put, means, whenever I say punch in or punch out, if you ever see the, the video kind of like zoom in or zoom out, that's probably the better term zoom in or zoom out where it can do that two or three um, kind of like two or three x just to kind of give that camera movement but you you know it's hard to do that if it's just your face if it's just your face they're going to be getting even closer you know to your face which i don't think really makes for the best right there so if you go for elbows up you're giving yourself more of a broad uh, plus hand gestures that was another reason what i started to realize and, and look into and read a little bit more and started to think about communication styles and actual connections with people and just that that term that or uh, the statistic that 70% of our 70% of our communication is non nonverbal which means that our hand gestures and our facial expressions and those types of things matter so if i want to make a even deeper connection with the audience if i include my elbows up in the frame then then Hopefully, I'm making a deeper connection with that with that person watching the video by including my hand gestures. So that was another reason why we started shifting to you know filming that way with elbows up. Allow me to take a quick break to remind you that we have very important links in the description below. If you want the full story of how we closed over one million in commissions our first year and over two point three million in commissions our second year, check out the first link. Also, you have the link to our number one Amazon best-selling book, Passive Prospecting. Last, if you enjoy this podcast and you're a giving person, leave a five-star review, please. Now back to the episode. To include hand gestures, allow that to to assist in camera angle. Uh, disruption or disrupting patterns, you know, pattern interrupts is what they would call that. And those types of things really uh, help uh, bring in the attention and also um, Jennifer, we got a hot mic again. I do. Oh, geez. Yep. Uh, so, and see, that's the thing, Chrissy, we can't, I guess I can't mute anyone for them so shalom yeah shalom you have a hot mic as well shalom i guess that's how you would say it or shalom yeah i don't know okay can i ask a question sure okay so you're saying that AI can take a video I've already done and, and upload it on YouTube and can create shorts or clips yes. from a video. Is that chat GPT or is there a specific uh, AI program for that? Chrissy, did you have that one we were looking at? Yes, it's called Opus Clip. So Opus Clip, I don't think, I mean, ChatGPT doesn't have editing options right now, do they? No. Okay. Yeah, I think that's more just text. So you could get ChatGPT to write scripts or things like that. But uh, we, and we haven't done this. I think we've tested around on TubeBuddy, but as Chrissy is saying, we haven't really found that to be the best as of right now. So you can probably a simple Google search right now and I wouldn't put the YouTube video I would just take the file so when you take the file and upload it to YouTube you still want that to be your long-form piece of content but then take that file put it into an AI service that claims that and it's just something where you'll want to test around with that it's supposed to be able to identify solid starting points and solid ending points for for some short-form content Levi this this is Steve Batiste in Seal Beach yeah, what's um, up, Steve? Hey, man, I'm, I'm using uh, com uh, a uh, program called Get Much, 
It's, it's app.getmunch.com, and it's 50 bucks a month, and it'll you can just put a, a URL in there for um, from one of your YouTube videos, or yeah, and it'll it'll pull it all in. It'll cut it up into however long the segments you want, and then uh, you can also upload it directly to um, oh hell. There's a bunch of different platforms in there. You can go directly, and they're working on having it integrate into the back end of um, YouTube as well. Okay, and that's did you say that was get get munch? It's it, yeah. You got to go to app app dot get munch m u n c h dot com. Okay, it's pretty cool, and it's, and it's fifty bucks a month. But I mean, you can you can just I think you can get like a thousand or a hundred hours worth of video. Uh, shorts out of it from your content so it's, it's pretty pretty cheap for what it does has it been giving you some good short form clips oh yeah yeah i mean i've, I've i got like you know a couple of clips i'm getting like two thousand views on and it's just it's crazy like my my uh i think the most most views i have on one video like long form is like 4200 views and this thing just like you know just goes in and does it automatically is it's it crazy is it adding captions yeah, yep. So it'll add like captions. Does it add like yep. the little funny emojis and everything too? It does. It doesn't do the emojis, but it'll do. There's different um, caption styles that you can choose from, and it'll you know it'll automatically put those in there too. And you can go back and edit them, and it gives you like t- uh, suggested titles and keywords for the videos to when you when you put them online. Okay. So I'll go in there and do like you know. 10 days out and then I'll you know once at the end of those 10 days I'll, I'll run another video through it pretty crazy okay cool yeah so I mean there's a lot of these programs coming out right now I mean all the craze and so there that's a, a simple format that you could test as far as you know increasing your content right there uh, depending on what your budget is now that one 50 bucks a month but seems like pretty good pretty good price on that and then also the other one that Chrissy mentioned that was another one we're going to test out so we'd kind of been running through some of the tube buddy stuff not quite where we believe it should be right now so so uh yeah you can test some things out and that's that's why uh cutting up your long form content uh is going to just be a lot easier to do that of course you could always try to find an editor uh to do that as well uh, there's just going to takes a little bit more time and and probably a little bit more money on there. So I would definitely experiment some of those with some of those options there as well. Uh, Jennifer, did that clear up your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. And then um, as far as, here's something else. Now, if you want to record some short form content right now, and you want to triple the output of your short form content if you're doing that then the simplest way to do that and is the simplest way to do that is to have three different hooks for the same video so if you have if you've written out your video ideas and you should hopefully you should be able to do this the the great thing is is that you can if you want to record something separately you want to record shorts because I do believe I do believe content that's recorded natively for these platforms, typically as far as I know, will do better. But again, the thing is, is that I've I've heard both. I've heard, you know, people that record specifically for these platforms and they do very well. I've heard other people say, well, I just chop up my content and put it out there and it just it does well. Uh, you know, ours is a mixed bag, I would say, especially on. We've had a, a short form channel for quite some time that we've published pretty consistently on. And I don't think we've really, it's never really taken off. That, so that, uh, uh, again, and it's not really been a focus of mine to look into it that much, but we initially started the separate shorts channel. I don't recommend this now. Uh, I would recommend, if you want to do some shorts, I would re- recommend you test that on your main channel. Uh, but before, because I was unsure about it, I, we started a second shorts channel and really just kind of link. Like we link our main channel on there when you can add a channel. Uh, you can also direct traffic to it in certain ways, like in the video descriptions, the default descriptions, things like that. So really that channel became, let's, you know, let's divert traffic over to 
the main channel if it was going to do that. But now I don't know if if that's what it's accomplished because YouTube's tracking from you know channel to channel or even if you own two channels over to the other one is not that specific you know it doesn't it's not gonna tell you well uh, you've got viewers coming directly from this channel it will tell you sometimes that your viewers watch this certain channel that's never showed up in our analytics so I'm not sure if people find that channel they don't subscribe or uh, because we haven't really ever gained a lot of subscribers on that channel and then it's moved over to uh, you know maybe they just found the long form video and then gone from there so I'm not sure and actually there's a couple of other things I could check on that to see uh, to see could check a couple of different links and see if I have the tracking on there but the the main thing is the reason we started that is because we started publishing two shorts a day on that channel but I've never really seen anything on there we've had some videos of course take off but most of them are just you know steady Eddie actually let me check the stats of that real quick so right now what I would say is if you're gonna do some short form content I would do that on your main channel but then I would I would be strategic about that I wouldn't publish like we we're really just kinda going for a volume thing more like hey let's just publish Oh, we haven't published in a while either. So we had stopped for some reason. Let me see. But every time we publish, you know, we're get, publishing a lot of content. We're getting spikes in the analytics. But yeah, the subscriber count never, we never really had anything really go super viral. Let me check the lifetime. Uh, the most viewed was 4,000. Hmm. Nope, 5,100. So we never got more than 5,100 views, but let me see. But that's all right. So, you know, again, we're just, we just did that to attract over to the main channel. And let me see. Yeah, and we link our other main channel. So again, if we captured any attention there, that's what just makes me wonder, do people go from that channel over to the other one? Um, because otherwise all we've ever done is publish shorts on there. But if I was going to record specific shorts, which is what we're going to start working on now, is recording very specific shorts for the channel. Uh, we could also probably chop some things up as well. And we have seen a couple of those shorts do well on Instagram and TikTok coming from, uh, coming from the cutouts. Like I mentioned the last... Uh, several pros and cons videos I've done from an office standpoint. I've done that from elbows up, so that makes it a lot easier to chop in and publish on those short form con uh, short form platforms. So that is something that again we're going through testing, um, seeing how things work, and playing around with it that way. Uh, what I've learned though is that if you want to record those shorts you definitely need to have the hook on there and if you have that hook you know think about your short whatever it is you want to record and then tweak the hook three different ways that way you can turn one video into three different videos now some may say well that's repetitive or people no, people won't notice because you're not gonna publish those three videos back to back but if you want to sit down and actually record 30 videos let's say for the month well, and but you'd rather publish more, you want to record, uh, if you want to record or publish two a day, that's, that's the simple way to do it is you have two different hooks. Then you have your 30 video topics, record two different hooks, and then um, edit, you know, add both of those on. This is what AIs, you know, this is what you need the manual editor for. So again, AIs is going to take what you have. Um, you know, and chopping it up, it's not like you're always talking in hooks. They may be able to find those those spots and talking points but from what I've seen and, and have been looking into and learning is that the videos with the hooks that are designed specifically for short form platformers really really do you know very well but again chopped up content can do well too but this is what we want to start testing with and we'll be filming some of those today where we'll uh, we've got 30 video topics we do three different hooks we're gonna have 90 videos at the end of the day which now we've got plenty to shoot let's say if we publish to a day that gives us 60 that still gives us another 30 for the next month and then if we record another 
30 videos with those hooks, then we could actually be two months ahead of schedule. Imagine that. Now you want to start looking at those videos with the two different hooks and as you start to publish those then make note of which hooks are doing better or which video topics. Now the thing is as well is that uh, what we've seen is that anytime I talk about a broad topic the broader the topic a lot of times the more reach. So if we're talking very specifically about you know Dallas Texas real estate that's a much more narrow and niche topic. But if I talk about something bigger, actually, I just had a you know one a reel that did really well on Instagram because I was I was talking about health, and I think health is a lot broader term than YouTube for real estate. And you know we've been going back and forth on my own Instagram. At the beginning, my engagement views was very very high. Now it's taken a huge hit. Uh, we haven't done much different, so it's like, okay, it's just the content. We need to change it up. We want to start recording specific content. So this is all the things that are making us think about these types of things. But now it's starting without even changing content. We're still publishing repurposed content on there because, again, I haven't sat down and just made specific reels for the audience on my Instagram. It's, it's been all repurposed because we do so many live events, uh, coaching, trainings, uh, speaking events. We have so much footage. I mean, we're backed up. We've got months of footage that we can publish on there, but it's all it's all repurposed. So that's the whole Gary V, you know, document versus create type of mentality. Well, as engagement kind of fell off over the last two months, we're, we're like, okay, maybe we got to change things up and start looking at doing more direct to camera, direct to audience type of content. So we are going to test that, but now engagement has been picking back up. Views have been picking back up. And this this last one about health, uh, you know, really did well. Almost uh, 10,000 views on that one. Uh, we used to get that every reel in the beginning. I don't know if we were just catching the real the reels trend with Instagram at that time but you know I don't know Instagram I think is still trying to figure out what they want to do because now they're putting emphasis on carousels and pictures again and uh, maybe that's why they're downplaying reels but at the same time I, I, I know other creators that are still still having good consistency on their reels so I think it's just an us problem what are we going to fix what are we going to change and those are the types of discussions we have to have and I can't blame the algorithm or the audience. I got to think, how do I do better? How do we do better? How do we make things different or change it up? So we'll do that. So we're going to record specific content, direct to camera, direct to audience, uh, change that up. But that's the simple way to stretch out your content is record two to three different hooks for each one. And that's the simple part because you could just record that that hook on its own and then record the reel after that. You bunch those three together and you're good to go. An editor could easily take that and attach the three different hooks on, you know, to make three different videos and you go from there. Again, you're not going to publish those all back to back, but you just space that out. If you space those out three, four or five days a week difference, it's going to be, it'll be very difficult for people to pick up the difference you know we're saying that they'll think it's a different video but but it's really the same message just different hook and the thing is is you actually might hook different people with different hooks so somebody that wasn't interested in the first one or two hooks you had that third hook may be the one that gets them and so that way if you're tracking that as well then you want to go back and start looking at different hooks and then if you can start to see a pattern with those hooks then then that's going to help you create a lot more consistent content as well and you'll start to understand which hooks really really matter so i think that is another way that you can really start to work in and stretching out your content increasing your content volume very quickly to where you know recording 30 short form videos and trying to keep that in under three minutes so what that means is, is that if you're going to re uh, record a reel or a short form video 60 seconds give yourself a time limit time limit of three minutes and so that includes mess ups right and that includes uh, your three different hooks and then that includes some mess ups maybe four if you're going to do three different hooks but three to four minutes so start a timer if you have to and say okay but know your hooks 
your hooks should be very simple, like very simple, three to five, maybe eight words at the most, you know, a sentence. That's your hook. You, you say it, boom, go to your next one, say it, go to your next one, say it. Those three you should be able to get through very easily. Then you got to get to the body of your content. Your body is really what's going to be the, the, the meat and potatoes of it. That you might mess up a couple of times, but once you start, you just need to, you know, get going on it and give yourself that deadline of three to four minutes in totality so that you're not dragging that on. So if you think about that, if you did three minutes on 30 videos, then you're really giving yourself about an hour and a half to do 30 videos. Think about that. And let's say you give yourself an extra minute. Well, that would be two hours. You know, could you block out two hours uh, once a month to record 30 videos with three different hooks that would actually give you 90 videos. And then imagine if you did that just two days in a row and then you you technically should have three months of videos at two videos per day. So if you wanted to publish two videos per day, that's how you do it. You would block out two hours one day, two hours the next day and record your 30 videos with three different hooks. Very simple. You know, as long as you stick to the format and the plan, you have your topics lined out, your three different hooks lined out, and you're ready to go. Uh, same thing with long form content. Long form content, you shouldn't have to think about that too much, but if you want to use that to chop up, and I think you could still do that as well, let that supplement. So if you sit down and record two hours and you get, uh, you know, 30 videos done with, with three different hooks, and that gives you a month and a half of two videos per day, then maybe the rest of the month, the other half of that month could be chopped up content from your long form videos. So you could have two months of content very easily right there at two videos a day uh, and you're good to go for two months. So that's, that's really a very simple plan, simple concept of how you can increase your content volume. Uh, I think I yes. I have a question. Uh -huh. So if you're going to take the content, first of all, I'm about to send in my first eight videos to y'all. I'm super excited about that. Um, awesome. So, so basically I would take the videos that y'all have already edited, put them in whatever chat or whatever AI program I choose. And then the hooks I create though will be, see how, how do I ask this? So I have to create the hooks separately because I don't know what the AI is going to spit out. Well, the, so, AI, the AI is going to just cut out an entire video for you. But I'll still need a hook for those videos, right? Well, you'd have to have an editor to add those on. Not, not necessarily. Uh, yeah, so if you, if you want to record specific content, that's where I was recommending you record hooks for that. If, if you're just chopping content out of long-form content, it's going to look for a starting point and an ending point. Okay. So if you say... Well, the number two pro of living in Dallas, Texas is, you know, technically that's kind of a hook, right? And so that's probably what the AI is going to look for. So it's very key to, you know, whenever I do my pros and cons videos, I typically try to talk that way. You know, the, here's the n number one pro of living in Dallas, Texas is this, you know, and then that gives it a very simple uh, starting point and, you know, that... I usually talk longer than a minute, but uh, I might be able to make a valid point within you know a minute, and that's what the AI would probably pull out. So if you if you have di distinguished starting points, and that's usually at the beginning of sentences, it's probably going to find that to make a valid point. So you wouldn't have necessarily record hooks for that, although you could, but you'd still have somebody probably piece that together. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yep. So, and then of course, one is is you know a very low cost if you use using AI. But again, you're going to get whatever it spits out for you. You have an editor. You have a lot more creative control on that aspect of it. But then you're also factoring in you know speed and somebody doing that and working with them. And and you can develop a system and get get on that and get a good process but again if you knock it out within two hours and you record all your videos and, and then push that over to them they'll be working on it what I would recommend of course is do it again the next day and then get somebody working on that stuff and whenever they have 
two to four weeks done, then you go and start to publish that content. And then uh, just stay consistent, stay on top of it. So I think that would be really key to doing that. Uh, Chrissy, is there anything else you want to throw in there? Yeah, and I think also doing videos like long form videos that are in the same area. One thing that Levi's done in the past is that he's done multiple videos around the same area in one go around. So price point videos are an excellent example of this. So he could go do a two, four, six and an $800,000 vlog probably on the same day if he's in the same neighborhoods and he notices that there's a $200,000 house and a $600,000 house in the same neighborhood. He would just do separate segments and those would be delegated to other videos. But really the potential for doing multiple videos in one day becomes very realistic when it's price point video. So that's a really good way to increase your content as well without having to put in a bunch of extra effort. Yep. Yeah. That's a good point too. So yeah, let's say you do a three, six and nine, a 300, 600, 900 all in the, in Frisco. Well, you're going to end up, let's say you end up around the 900,000. We'll then go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to, now I'm going to make a, what does 900 K get you in Frisco, Texas, and then go out and find three other homes, different homes. Cause you're already in that neighborhood, likely around the same price points. Then you could backtrack if you wanted based on time and your schedule and daylight Maybe you go back to the six hundred thousand dollar neighborhood and you say, okay, now I'm going to do a, what does six hundred thousand get you in Frisco, Texas, and I'm going to feature three different, completely, or completely different uh, homes in that price range. So, and I've done up to four vlogs in one day. So, uh, and I've done that in different cities. Now, those were four cities, basically right next to each other, and. And, uh, yep, that's, I've, I've done that before. So that's four videos right there. And if I'm going to spend all day or if I'm going to take a Saturday or block a Saturday or block a Friday, then I'm going to try to get as much done as possible. And if I can knock out four of those videos, then, uh, which typically, yeah, probably two hours of vlog tour for me now at this point. And that's with, you know, just kind of like driving around, uh, probably grabbing a cup, a cup of coffee somewhere, getting out. Uh, you know, those types of things. So six hours, um, two, four, six, or maybe eight. Yeah. Two, four, six. I don't know. I could probably do, I've done them yeah, well within an hour too. So yeah, probably six hours total. I could do four videos. So maybe hour, hour and a half sometimes depending on the area. And that's a, that's a good day. I think after around that two, I'm kind of like, I'm good, especially walking around yapping and talking on a, on a, on a phone or the iPhone or, or filming, that can get that can get to the point where you're like, okay, I think that's a good good draw for the day. Just the same thing if you're recording for two, four, or six hours at, at the house or a studio or something like that. I mean, probably around the four to six hour mark, it's probably the best time to call it. You're going to start getting tired or fatigued or not as much energy and, and you want to have your energy up as much as possible whenever you're making these types of videos. Just like whenever I recorded the audiobook for Passive Prospecting, which by the way, uh, Passive Prospecting is available on Audible now, so you can get your audiobook version if you wish. You know, when I, re when I read for hours, they broke that up and the engineer stopped me at the end of the first day and was like, okay, I think, it, I think we're done here. <laughs> you know, she's like, uh, you, don't, you don't sound as energetic and you're starting to stumble over words a little bit more and it just happens naturally. You get fatigued, your vocal cords. I've heard of talk show radio host, you know, that have had vocal problems. Well, at the end, yeah, I think uh, like Morgan Wallen, right? <laughs> Morgan Wallen just recently canceled uh, some tour dates because of vocal cords, vocal injuries. So that is a reality. Uh, you can talk too much sometimes. <laughs> so, um, you know, you just be mindful of that. Know what your kind of your, your limitations are. And it's okay. You know, if you can knock out four hours of video in one day, that's a lot. That's good. You should be proud of yourself. So, uh, but here on short form content, if you want to knock out two hours one day and two hours the next day, you're going to be, you should be really, really fresh and on top of it. And can you imagine getting three months worth of content in a four hour time frame? That's, I think that's pretty significant, but that's where you have to give yourself the parameters and, and the discipline to be able to do that. Eva, I have another question. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so I did the um, blog tour of different price points. Um, I noticed uh, halfway through one of them was trash day. 
So there were a lot of trash cans outside. So I don't know if you would recommend redoing that one. And then I also noticed when I got home, when I was doing the um, shooting the drive-bys through the neighborhood, you can see my rear view mirror. <laughs> no, my side mirror. Hmm. And some of that. Is that, should I just send them in and get, content going on my channel or would you redo that both of those no i think it's fine i mean I, it's been i feel like it's trash day every day i go out i, I go to different neighborhoods and i'm like on a monday i'm like monday's trash day okay go to a different neighborhood tuesday tuesday's trash day oh my god so uh, i've done it before i think i just position it to where i might shift a little bit or walk on the sidewalk most of the time people put their trash on the street so if i walk on the sidewalk and position my camera where the trash cans are really kind of like behind me, then I can keep most of that stuff out. Now, if it's in the frame or something like that, I may just say, oh, and I'm here on Tuesday, by the way, and looks like Tuesday's trash day. You know, I might just throw that in there uh, just to say it. So it's not, I don't think that's a really big deal. Uh, rear view mirrors, yeah, I would try to cut that stuff out, but I don't think that's really worth going back and trying to redo uh, redo all of that. That's just additional time. So I would just make a mental note of that and say next time, try to keep my uh, rear view mirror out of it. So I think you'll be fine. And since you're working with the editing team too, we can crop that for you. So that's not a big deal. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, even better. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, let's see. Anything else, Chrissy, we should cover on this topic? I don't think so. I think that we covered it pretty well between shorts and just trying to get multiple videos in around certain areas. It's just about being more efficient. It's really not about doing more. It's just trying to figure out. And I think just having an overall plan every time that you create a video, just kind of get in a mental habit of where am I going to repurpose this? How can I use this in another place? Is there a way for me to do multiple topics on this? If you have a bigger picture in mind for all of your videos, it doesn't feel like you're doing as much getting more efficient with what you're doing and that's ultimately what helps you create more content yeah yeah that's a great way to put it doesn't mean you need more volume you just need to be more efficient and for those that say well i'm out showing homes all day well try to give try to show up an hour early or leave an hour later in that neighborhood when you show somebody the last house know where you're at and say okay can i can i stick around and make a video over the next hour and so if you are out every single day with people then think about that. Say, okay, we're going to meet at 10. Maybe I should get out there at 8.30 or 9 in the morning and record something before we get to the first location. Uh, maybe we're going to end up at 4 p.m. Well, most of the times people are like, 4 p.m., that's a great day, showed some homes, I'm ready to go to the house. But that's where you got to say, hey, you know what? I'm already over here. I drove 30 minutes to get to this neighborhood. Let me knock out a video real quick. And that's what it takes. It takes that extra hour, hour and a half to do that. And I feel a lot better at the end of that day than just, you know, going home. So, you know, and sometimes I'll knock out two or three very quickly. And then I'm like, okay, well, it feels pretty good. Let me go knock out another one. So I want to just make sure I feel satisfied and, and happy with, with the time that I spent and uh, being efficient and looking at that. So so those are good opportunities to do that as well. If you're if you're at an open house and it's a slow open house, it shouldn't be if you marketed it effectively, but if you're at a slow open house, go and make a reel in the kitchen, make a reel in the living room, make a reel in the bedroom, make a reel in the bathroom, make a reel in the backyard, you know? You could make 10 15 reels probably in between. Those are super simple and you could do something very quick. You could point out something uh, in the kitchen, point out a good thing, maybe make a different one about a bad thing about the kitchen. Same thing with the bathroom or the bedroom or the backyard. Oh, here's what I like about this backyard. Boom, boom, boom. And here's what you should look for. Or here's a big no-no <laughs> when you're buying a home, especially in this backyard. And then, you know, show them something else. So now make sure, make sure uh, you're respectful about that as well <laughs> and how you position that too. You definitely don't want your client or whoever's open house that is coming back to that very slim chance of that happening but still uh, you know be mindful of that but uh, you could keep it positive as well and say hey here's a big plus uh, in this backyard that you won't see in other backyards boom and then you give them 
you give them the rundown. You can do that in between, you know, if the open house is slow. So these are the things you want to think about too. The places you're at, areas you're in, neighborhoods uh, that you're showing properties. Even if you're going on a listing appointment, maybe staying out after that listing appointment and going and filming something in the neighborhood. You know, what you're doing during open houses. You can host open houses and create content at the same time. More likely, uh, better to do short form content. Get permission from uh, your seller or if you're doing it for a listing agent to, you know, do a, a, a listing tour on that home while you're there as well. You know, all these types of things you can think about, uh, you can do. If you're going to be out in new construction community, uh, new construction homes, model homes, they will let you film those anytime. So if you need some ideas for content or you feel like you're missing something, go to a model home, film a, a nice walkthrough. So we get business from that all the time. So just think efficiently, you know, act efficiently, and just realize that sometimes you can consolidate a lot of this, condense it, and really be very, very efficient in your content production and therefore it won't seem like such a burden and a strain whenever you have these types of things mapped out you you know maximize your time or if you're going to sit down and do it you have the plan in place you know exactly what you're going to film how you're going to film it and give yourself time limits as well we're going to be publishing a video on uh, the passive prospecting youtube channel shortly and it's the video of how uh, it's one of my raw videos, <laughs> so you're going to see me mess up, you're going to see me start over, you're going to see me uh, do all kinds of things, but that's what happens. It was a 40, it's a 40 minute video, now 10 minutes of that got edited out because it was my mess ups and start overs and things like that, but then you'll be able to compare that to the final version to see how clean and seamless it looks, and it looks perfect, right, <laughs> the final version, but whenever I'm recording it by myself, it's just me and the camera, and I gotta, I gotta work through that stuff. So, so that's it. Um, I think that pretty much covers it for today. Any other last-minute questions, Jennifer? Yes, I'm <laughs> always full of questions. <laughs> um, real quick, so uh, I'm gonna do one of the neighborhood I live in and the neighborhood I grew up in. Would you? Are you, do you get that personal in your videos? Uh, getting personal as far as the neighborhood I grew up in. Yeah, this is the neighborhood I live in. This is where I grew up. My actually, my grandfather did build houses in this neighborhood too. Like, would you put all that in the video, or do you try to keep it more general rather than being really personal about? No, I mean we. Your, uh, so you know, we, yeah, we talk about incorporating, not dedicating. So, so I think it, that that's really up to you. You know, if you say, hey. Um, it's how comfortable do you feel? I don't know. I doubt anything's going to happen. But if you say this is my neighborhood, and it's a small neighborhood, I mean, I, gotcha. I don't think anything's going to happen. I mean, I just moved in to a new neighborhood, and I've already had a couple of the neighbors come up to me and say, "Aren't you the guy on YouTube?" Uh, okay. And, yeah, and uh, and actually, now it's happened twice at the uh, once at the Chipotle and once at the Mediterranean restaurant. So that's already like four people uh, within the last two weeks that have recognized me. Actually, one stopped by in his golf cart and he's like, "Hey, Levi!" <laughs> you know, just I was like, "Oh, I was okay. like, hey," and he's like, uh, "He's like, yeah, man, love your videos." And uh, he was like, "I thought I, I thought that was you moving in." So you know, the thing is, is that just really depends on who who do you want to be known as. I mean, you know, people agents will send out postcards and farm their their own neighborhood right and and say like local resident or something like that i mean so a lot of people put that stuff out there uh i don't think you know as long as you don't show your house directly probably uh, you know then you're probably going to be fine and if you want to say yeah this is the neighborhood i live in love it a lot uh, here's the things that okay. you know this or that it's up to you or you say hey here's the neighborhood i grew up in i mean so i just probably wouldn't go into extensive detail on this is where I grew but it does help with those stories too so if you're like I remember when there this this whole section wasn't even here you know this this playground wasn't here or this this used to be a school or that used to be a church and now it's apartments or yeah you know I mean I think talking people through 
those changes in your experiences is perfectly fine. So, I mean, I talk about I talk about growing up in Stephenville. I, I don't go into anything in Stephenville because it's two hours south of Dallas. There's not really, uh, you know, there's not much of a connection other than other than yeah, I was born and raised in in Texas and and out in the country, but. I moved to Dallas as soon as possible, uh, so because I wanted to be in the city, and uh, you know, so I don't know. I make references about those types of things, but I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't start out a video and say, "Hey, in this video, I'm going to take you around my old neighborhood." You know, uh, I would make it more like, "Hey, I'm going to show you this neighborhood today." Actually, this is where I grew up, but a lot has changed, and let me tell you what's happening right now, so that you can make a good decision and see if this is a good fit for your family. So. You always want to position that in a way that it's value for the viewer versus, oh, let me just talk about myself, I guess you could say. So I don't think there's anything wrong with incorporating those types of things, but just keep in mind who your audience is. And and I wouldn't start out the video like, hey, today we're going to explore my old neighborhood. I'm going to show you my old house and I'm, you know, yada, yada, yada. I uh, probably wouldn't go into that. I would say today we're going to explore this neighborhood. Show you, you know, show you some different homes, different price points. Let's see what's in your budget. Oh, by the way, you know what? It's it's my old stomping grounds. It's where I grew up. But you know, we won't dig into too much of that. I'm going to show you what all the different things are happening around there. What what makes it great today? So you want to keep it very relevant today into who your viewer is. Okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. All right, let me see. Uh, let me check the chat real quick. See if we got any quick questions in there. Uh, let's see. Kristen says video.ai, which is vidyo.ai, does that as well. So there's another option you could check out. Vidyo. Yeah, I've heard of that one. I haven't looked into that one. Actually, I'm going to write that down so we can check that one out too. Oh, Mia says, what do you call viral? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I think. Viral would be what's over your normal view count. I like to say mini viral because I feel like a viral video is probably a million views. Seems like, I don't know, I mean, but you get 800,000 views on a video, that's pretty good too. But for us, we're, we're very steady Eddie. You know, we had one, one video uh, last year that took off and got 30,000 views in the, in the first month. That's, that's kind of like viral for us. That's pretty good. You know, so that one's pretty good. Levi, how do you deal? How do you deal with negative uh, comments? Oh, uh, I mean, it just depends on the comment. If it's, if it's, well, yeah, I mean, I'm in it, California, so I get, I, I got a lot of people saying, "Who the hell would want to move to California? That place is, you know, a shithole." Or they don't say that because if it's, if there's any swearing in it, it gets blocked immediately. Yeah, but. You know, I have people commenting like on, on my veteran benefits, one of my veteran benefits videos, and they're they're always like, you know, why would you ever want to move there? These are the same uh, benefits that are in all states, you know, and it's like, why, why, why are you even coming on here commenting? You're not even going to move here, you know, but people will do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, those I don't mind. I'll, I'll troll them back a little bit sometimes. So, you know, yeah. I, I would think of a better way to, to troll them, you know, so... And a lot of times is that they won't even respond anyways. Uh, now, if it's if it's like racist or hateful, then that that I I'll I'll delete that. If it's I had that too. Yeah, if it's if it's Bitcoin related, I delete that. Um, but if it's something like that, why would anybody ever move there? Or you know, people say that all the time. Well, property taxes suck in Texas, and and I'll usually just hit them back, you know, and I'll just I'll ask a question. Uh, because I don't think that's really a bad thing, you know, and, and I think a lot of people look at that, uh, you know, I think with the negativity out there, people think like they're really doing something noble or helping someone else. And I think most people look at that and are just like, yeah, I mean, whatever, what an idiot, you know? <laughs> yeah. The, the race, the racist comments came from Texas, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that, bad. that, that can happen. Uh, yeah, yeah I don't, uh, I don't like that stuff. So and I don't, I don't really see it anymore. And sometimes it's there's just a there's just a person or two. They get in there, and then uh, I don't know. I've had I've had the hateful person, and then they'll go comment across five different videos. 
So, yeah. And it's just funny. It's like, what? yeah, it, <laughs> really? You're going to spend that much time? But if they want to waste their time watching videos, multiple videos, commenting on all of them, I'm, I'm just not worried about those types of negative comments. Uh, again, as long as they're not racist, hateful, or Bitcoin, you know, like, oh, I met Bobby Sue and she made me $64,000, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, which that I haven't, we were getting hit for a little while for like 30 days, man. It was like every single one, but I, I would, uh, delete and block those people. And I think that cleared out most of it. So, cause we just don't get hit with that, you know, really much anymore. Um, I'm getting hit with that a lot on my Instagram. It was funny. I thought, I thought it was just me. Like I'm, you know, I'd post a video on Instagram and then it was all, I'd get three or four Bitcoin uh, but it's funny because then Grant Cardone posted a reel the other day. Grant Cardone was like, he's like, dude, he's like Facebook, Instagram, y'all suck. Y'all need to do better. And he goes, watch. He goes, don't actually, nobody watching this even comment. He goes, watch how many bots start hitting up my comment section. And sure enough, after he posted that video, you know, he got, it was like 20, 30. He gets hit with like 20 or 30 of them. So, yeah, I mean, that stuff, uh, it's pretty manageable on YouTube. Uh, so, and I've been mostly diligent on that. And I think we've kind of gotten rid of a lot of those trolls. And I don't know if there's system trackings or things like that, that, that you can kind of combat that stuff. But yeah, if they're, if they're just pissed off about California, <laughs> then I'm, I'm okay with that. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. And you never, like I said, if you want to kind of troll them back a little bit, like respectfully and, and see if you can, uh, generate a little uh, conversation there, then that could be interesting too, you know, because you never know. But most of the time, nobody's ever responded to my questions back to them. So, oh, I had a guy, I had a guy going back and forth with me, and it started getting bad. I just, and he started uh, going to other videos, like you said, and uh, you know, he's one of me. He said, oh, you know, it was it was basically I put up a video about because a lot of people are worried about the, the gun laws in California. Mm-hmm. So I put up a video about California gun laws and how things are changing. And he, he was a, you know, a anti second amendment guy. Mm-hmm. We started going back and forth. And then he started going to my other videos saying that he was going to, you know, he's looking to buy a house out here. And, um, you know, now he knows who not to use. And I just, I just like blocked him altogether. So, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. See, me. I mean, first of all, if you're gonna post a gun law video, then just know that's coming, right? Because you're oh, yeah, definitely. Right. <laughs> uh, second of all, you know, I'd probably just say, "Yep, no, hey, I I get it. That's exactly why I post these videos, so I can work with the people that that want to work with me, and vice versa." So you're you're right. We're probably not a good fit, and I do wish you the best. You know, and that would be something I would just I would just close it off on there, and then he can comment as much as he wants after that. And I think people will see just how you respond does matter. So that's why we say do it tactfully, respectfully, but also people will notice like if I'm a little smart ass to, to somebody in a comment, but I also do it tactfully, you know, people will pick up on it and usually they'll take your, your back. Cause you've got a lot more dedicated viewers than you do trolls, you know? Yep. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But if you're, yeah, if you're going to talk about guns, uh, being a California channel, then yeah, get, get ready for it. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So, and the thing is, is like, if somebody comments on veterans and says it's the same in every state, no, it's not say it's absolutely not the veterans, diff- uh, the veteran benefits differ from state to state. So, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, but you, you know, make sure you're up, up to date on your, um, your, oh, yeah. your stats though i mean and uh so you know just do your research ahead of time but at the same time i've posted some things people will catch you on and i'll just be like hey yep good catch you know so yeah, it's funny man i got my my veteran benefits a video that i put up a few months ago i got like 153 subscribers off of just that video yeah i've had people call me like like veterans that were not buying the, i had a guy call me a couple weeks ago and he was like, you know, he was in bad, bad shape and couldn't, couldn't leave the house. He just called to talk to me, you know, he just wanted to chit chat. I know the guy that's locked up in a VA uh, hospital in Puerto Rico and hit me up, you know, basically helped me get out of here. You know, it's just, it's, it's crazy, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Those veteran benefits are key, key, key videos. So yeah, for sure. 
All right. Well, great. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Good to chat. Um, Jennifer, thanks for the questions. Appreciate it. And that's our time for today. So, um, you know, make sure you check out Amazon uh, to get a copy of the book, Passive Prospecting. As I mentioned, we're also available on Audible now as well. And we need some reviews on Audible. So if you don't mind, if you do pick up a, a copy on Audible, once you listen to it completely, you should be able to rate and review. And if you do that, you'll just get some good karma points, I suppose. But also check our Facebook group, you know. there's uh, We always we, we offer a lot of different things in there as well. So, so check that out. Uh, you can just search for Passive Prospecting on Facebook. You should find our group. And we give away a lot of good information in there. And also you can stay up to date on all these trainings when we publish these. So until next week, we will uh, see you then. Thank you for joining us on today's podcast. If you're interested in partnering with us to access our YouTube course and coaching at no cost, schedule a call at PassiveProspectingPartner.com.